I think Mike Sermon is danger to play. Grow the mindset. Just got done doing Alex Jones. His shirt is a little baggy. I need to. I need to get it tailored. I need to get it tailored. Mike Sermon is danger to play. Whoa, hold on. Grow the mindset. All right, we're getting back. To Just group. got done doing Alex Jones. His shirt is a little baggy. Patience. I need to back, back, back. Here we go. All right, we're live. Question mark, Taylor M. You are being blocked. All right. All right, let's catch up on. What's up, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? Happy Mother's Day to the moms. Happy Mother's Day to the moms, first of all. Happy Mother's Day. What is going on? What am I going to talk about? Oh, man. We got so much to talk about. I cannot even keep up with what we have to talk about. And I think the first thing we'll talk about, the first thing we're going to talk about is Keith Oberman, Alex Jones debate. Keith Oberman, Alex Jones debate. So Keith Oberman is a, I don't know what he is. I don't know who Keith Oberman is. Never heard of the guy, but apparently he thinks he's a big deal. I'm a big believer in put your money where your mouth is. Put your money where your mouth is is the equivalent of just if you have I can't cuss right now. Talk, S-H-I-T, get it. Put your money where your mouth is. Keith Oberman likes to run his mouth. So I have offered a $100,000 debate challenge. Keith Oberman. If Keith Oberman and Alex Jones has agreed to terms, Alex Jones has you know endorsed the idea, is fully on board, $100,000 to charity. If Keith Oberman, We'll debate Alex Jones. One hour. Neutral monitor. Moderator. $100,000 to charity. Keith Oberman, that is the challenge. Will he take it? Will he take it? I don't know. I don't know, but there's a $100,000 offer there for Keith Oberman. Just so you know, charity debate. Thus far, he has refused to take it. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you're watching on YouTube. We had another funny thing happen. So a lot of you told me, a lot of you had told me that Sam Harris from the Joe Rogan podcast and just was obsessed with me. And in fact, it was so bad that Joe Rogan had to do an intervention with Sam Harris because Sam Harris could not stop talking about me. So I tried, I tried to watch the video and I couldn't. I tried to watch the video. I couldn't because it was so boring. My God, dude, what happened to Joe Rogan? When did Has Joe Rogan always been boring, or is that like a new thing? Because I, Joe Rogan used to be interesting, and I tried to watch Joe Rogan talk to Sam Harris, and I was bored out of my mind, even to hear me, even to hear them talk about me. I was so bored. I was so bored that even though they were going to talk about me, I couldn't listen to it. It's about to fall asleep, dude. So is Joe Rogan, is, has Joe Rogan lost his edge? I don't know. So somebody made a video of Sam Harris going off on me, and, and I'll kind of play it. You can find it on my YouTube channel. So if you're on YouTube, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. And if you're on Periscope, I'm trying to get you guys to over to YouTube because I want you know I want you guys everywhere. So I'll go ahead and play this. Mike Cernovich, who who's actually has effects on the real world. I mean, Mike Cernovich is, again, uh, he's a Twitter troll. Um, again, one of these other guys who's... Wait a minute. Mike Cernovich is a Twitter troll? Mike Cernovich is a Twitter troll, Sam Harris? Really? Is that right? I don't know. I got author, filmmaker, journalist, been in the White House. I have a White House press pass, so I'm literally a White House correspondent. I'm a White House correspondent, multiple author, wrote a book on Trump, wrote a book, Guerrilla Mindset. I've sold out all those books, actually. I don't have any more. Hardcovers. I just can't keep, keep them in stock. Filmmaker. So right away, Mike Savage is a Twitter troll. Twitter troll. What a crybaby. What a crybaby. A Twitter troll. Sure thing. Sure thing. Hold on. Challenged me to debate him, and I, you know, I mean, there's, there's no, there's absolutely no possibility. You need, to, possible you need to spend less time on Twitter. Yeah, listen, but, no, but, but Cernovich just was just on 60 Minutes. I mean, he's like, he's in the world. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Sam Harris. 
Sam Harris calls himself a rationalist and a logical guy. He called me a Twitter troll, but now he's saying on 60 Minutes. Hold on. I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused. Help me out here. Help me out here with the logic because he's a new atheist. They're so freaking smart. Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Chris Hitchens, who, who died because he didn't take care of his body, you know, didn't take care of himself, dude. That's why he's dead, reality. They're so rational and so smart that one minute he's calling me a Twitter troll, but the next minute he's like, well, wait a minute, Mike is on 60 Minutes. So what is it? Am I a Twitter troll or am I a journalist, author, filmmaker who's on 60 Minutes, right? Right away, logic fail. Logic fail. Well, uh, and he's affecting people's psyche. Your psyche. Whoa, 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 there you go. He is affecting people's perception of Trump. Sam Harris quote. So first he goes, Mike Cernovich is a Twitter troll. Okay. But Mike Cernovich is on 60 Minutes. Well, wait a minute. And he's affecting people's perception of Trump. Whoa, 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 whoa. If I'm only a Twitter troll, how is it that I'm influencing people in the real world and I've watched more people watch me on 60 Minutes other than Barack Obama 2008? I gave 60 Minutes their biggest ratings boost in, in a decade. But I'm a Twitter troll, but I'm influencing people in the real world and altering their perception. He's not a very smart guy, is he? He's not very intelligent. Well, for yeah. sure, right? <laughs> Yeah, so come back. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, the, that's what. So what, what I'm when I was bringing up these guys like Cernovich. I mean, this this is. Um, I actually, I I, I troll. Wow, wow, what happened? Whoa, 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 whoa! He he can't even talk. There ain't no such things, right? He's scared to death. He's scared to look. In his yearbook. How shook? How shook is Sam Harris on a scale of one to ten? Hold on, let's go back and watch that clip. How shook on a scale of 1 to 10 is Sam Harris? He is scared to death. He is scared to look in his yearbook because he's going to see those Golden Girls royalty checks. He's never made his own money. He's living off his mom's Golden Girls royalties. That's what he never tells anybody. So let's watch that one more time. And you can tell me how shook, how shook he is. The, that's what. So I, what I'm, when I was bringing up these guys like Cernovich, I mean, this, this well, was, well, 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 I actually, I, I, I'm one day, and I, I, I thought it was hilarious. I, it was just nothing but fun. Do you know that Donald Trump Jr. said that Cernovich should get a Pulitzer? No, for exposing really. Susan Rice. Really? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's, See, but that's, a, that's, that's, that, that's why. Story. That's why this drives me a little crazy because it's not Cernovich. <laughs> It's, That's why this drives me a little bit crazy. See, he goes on like that for like a long time. The thing with Cernovich, Cernovich, Cernovich. But thing, the thing about Cernovich, um, um, but, 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 I don't really care that much. But, but, one thing that drives me crazy. What a joke, dude. What a joke. He used to be relevant too. So interesting thing happened with the whole Sam Harris kind of debacle. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. A, a funny thing happened. A funny thing happened with this whole thing. Most of you never heard of Sam Harris. Most of, most of my people go, who is Sam Harris and why are you giving him free publicity? Overwhelmingly, that is what I heard from people. They're like, dude, this guy is a nobody. I never heard of this guy. And that really shows why he is so jealous because Sam, 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 mindfulness. Namaste, my brother. Namaste, my brother. Do some deep breathing. Do some meditation. Take some cold showers. You know, namaste, bro. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to bite you. Sam, I know you're watching. I'm not going to bite you, bro. I'm not even going to put you in an arm lock. I'm not even going to jit you. I'm not going to box you right i forgot about you until people sent me that clip which one of you edited actually one of you i'm gonna you know talk about a pet peeve of mine so i got it somebody sent it to me and apparently the guy who edited the video was uh, a guy who follows me on twitter so i linked the video on twitter to his page and then i took the video and uploaded it to my youtube and then he goes oh thanks for giving me credit Dude, people are so, like, dude, I linked to you earlier, and I gave you credit, and if you want more credit, I'll give you more credit. Do you want a BJ, bro? Like, 
How about you just DM me? Hey, got, hey, I follow your stuff, and I link to that. Would you link to my Twitter page or something? Right? Because I gave the guy credit and linked to him. Right? So don't be passive aggressive in life. In life, don't be like, oh, thanks for nothing, man. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, real nice. Don't be passive aggressive. All right? Just be like, hey, bro. Um, you know, that was my, I did that editing thing. Can I get like a link to my YouTube page? For sure. Right? Because I linked, I linked to him earlier on Twitter before I uploaded the video myself. I gave a link to his YouTube page. So it isn't like I found his video, downloaded it, and then uploaded it like it was mine. Right? Everybody knows I can't edit videos like that. There ain't a person in the world who thinks that I could edit a video like that at that level. Right? There is nobody. No, nobody saw that video and was like, wow, Cernovich, you know, he edited that video. So the guy was a nice guy, but don't be passive aggressive. Just say, hey, dude, you know, that was my thing. And then I said, hey, dude, I actually linked to it. And then he goes, oh, thanks. Right? Dude, I'm not going to do you guys dirty. You know, I'm not going to steal your content. I, I love to link to you. I want to promote all your stuff. I want to build, I want to build your guys' brands up, right? I want you to blow up. So don't come at me with that passive aggressive shit. Just be, you know. What else did I say I was going to talk about? Man, so much going on, guys. Oh, did you guys see the trailer? Wow. So I put out a casting call for Cerno Films. And I got some, wow, I got some submissions. So I put out a casting call for Cerno Films, and I said, I want to make a documentary on media hoaxes. And I told the people, if you want to be on my film team, post your best work to the hashtag C-E-R-N-O-F-I-L-M-S, right? I said, you know, post your best work. And I figured, you know, 260,000 people follow me on Twitter. There are a couple filmmakers probably, you know. It's hard to make money. It's hard to make money as a filmmaker, right? Very, very hard. And my goal is to help people make money. If you're good, I'm not, you know, I'm not a charity, right? But I want to spread the wealth because a lot of people, a lot of people give me money to do film stuff, but, and I don't keep the money for myself. That's what most people don't realize is the super chat money that is enabled on YouTube, the Patreon money. I don't spend any of that money on myself. The book world is what I live off. So I had one guy, 20 grand he sent it. I kid you not. I was blown away. I'm not going to say who he is because, you know, I don't want to, but he's a regular, you know, he calls in and stuff. 20 grand he sent me, right? Why? Because he wants great films. He wants art. He knows that I can put people together and he knows I'm not going to spend that money on myself, right? So I got, you know, 20 grand and I want to put people to work. I want people. So here's, here's one of the, here's one of the documentary trailers that was sent to me right now. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political, special interest, and their agenda is to elect crooked Hillary Clinton. She had a seizure and froze up walking into her motorcade. Well, she had pneumonia. I mean, How do you know? Who told you that? Well, the campaign told us that. Why would you trust the campaign? Uh, and that's what Robbie Mook is talking about when he says he believes that fake news, possibly from Russia, from Russian propagandists, helped to undermine Clinton's campaign. That demonstrates the divide between the people who report on politicians and the voters in that story. Because a lot of us, our reaction was, okay, she got the number right, but a lot of them are deplorable, a lot of them are racist. Don't be... Did you give us a question? I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You stay, can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Fake news is the worst thing that you can call a journalist. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones. He is racist. We learned this magic word, racist, racist, racist. 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 And Alex Jones is racist, and how dare Donald Trump talk to Alex Jones. But does it scare you that the president-elect is listening to InfoWars? This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a black president, and that's the part where the pain comes. I why will nobody here cover the violence against Trump supporters? And why will you demand that leaders of the Democrats disavow the violence in the FIFA? This is being completely covered up, and I want to know why nobody will demand 
that the Democrats disavow in Tifa violence. Disavow in Tifa. Disavow in Tifa. You're not making this demand the way you're strong. So it's unfair. It's very important that this get out there. Thank you. Newly released WikiLeaks emails show Hillary Clinton was tipped off to the CNN primary debate question. Campaign staffers were working directly with mainstream journalists to develop news stories favorable to the campaign before they were even published. It's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. Through WikiLeaks, as she said, one thing, uh, it's <laughs> No. All right, let's see if we can get Congressman Collins back. Obviously, we just lost the satellite feed. That sucks. Quantcast has blacklisted InfoWars from its top trafficked websites. There's a real censorship movement starting in YouTube, and it's directed against conservatives. And I'm getting worried that it's effective. I mean, we'll always find another way. And that is why they want to censor us, because they are so ineffective and so out of touch that people can't believe or trust them now. And one-on-one, -on -one, even in an editing room with a full-time production staff, they cannot take us on. That is why they're working very hard to get us banned from the Internet. How do you decide whether something is true? How does anybody decide? That's an epistemological question. What is the nature of truth? Whoa! Do you got chills? If you got chills, hit the like button if you're on YouTube. If you got chills... Then hit the like button on YouTube and, yeah, hit the button on YouTube. If you like that, hit the subscribe button. Not too shabby, huh? That was, um, that was put out by a, you know, one of you. One of you watching right now put that out. How good? How good is that? Pretty impressive. And then we got another one, which is good. Um... But I can't post it because it has music on it that's copyrighted. So if I put it on, then my video will get taken over by the copyright holder. So Scooter, Scooter did, um, submitted one, which was good too. But I can't play it because he he inlaid some like Johnny Cash. Um, he inlaid Johnny Cash or whatever. So you can't. If I play it now, then that'll be a um, copyright thing. So yeah, I can't do it. But that one was pretty blowing, right? <clears throat> yeah, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you liked that. That was on point, dude. So there's a um, there's a couple. So I, what I'll probably do is I'm going to have both of them talk. And then if they can co-direct it, then we're going to talk about a co-direct. Because I want it done by October. I want, I want the... I want hoax done by October, and that'll be, you know, hey, I know you've told me three times. I don't know if you're a friend of Scooter's. I appreciate that. You know, that's like the fifth time you said that. We, we get it. So the, um, what was I saying? Yeah, it's like I get it. Scooter's my friend. I talked to him on the phone, right? Like, okay, say it once. I get it. Thank you. Appreciate the feedback. But if you keep, if you keep saying it, it sounds like spam, right? Then it sounds insincere. Sounds like a shell. It just doesn't seem doesn't seem sincere, you know. Say it once or twice, we get the point. So I think I'm going to have both of them work on it, and I want it out by October because October 31st, Halloween weekend, I'm planning the big event. The big event. What is the big event? Well, right now it's called the big event, and we don't we don't know what we're going to call it. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to call it yet. So I'll just tell you the truth. So the Deplorable co-event organizer and I are going to do another event. We're calling it the big event because we don't know what it's going to be called. <clears throat> and it'll be kid-friendly. It'll be kid-friendly. And it's going to be at least 1,000 people, you know, maybe 1,500 people, maybe 20. It depends how big we want to want it. And it's going to be big. It is going to be like – hard to describe It'll be like Davos meets it like Davos meets Ted meets CPAC meets Coachella, right? So we're gonna have real training. That CPAC training is no good. Kid friendly. I just said kid friendly, bro. Come on, pay attention. Is it kid friendly? Yes, I literally just said it was kid friendly. Pay attention. 
I do block people who ask redundant questions. So it'll be real training on fourth generation warfare, social media strategies, brand building, getting our message across, persuasion. We're going to get a lot of big names there. And we're going to have good music. And we're going to have good music. House music. I don't like boring music. I like good music. We're going to have house music. We're going to have real DJs. We're going to have real performers, real music. Talks. We're going to have talks about everything. So it isn't going to be just the general, we're a true conservative, and the real true conservatives are here, and nobody else is a true conservative, and let me bore you. No, no, no. No, no, no. Legitimate intellectuals are going to be in attendance. The kind of people who have written books, right? That's the thing. A lot of people are trying to get me to always say, well, why don't you invite so-and-so to your event? Well, if you want to talk at a Mike Cernovich event, where can I find your book, right? All these people go, Cernovich, why don't you talk to this guy or that guy? That guy's a leading intellectual. Where's your book? You got any books? You got any films? I got books and films out there. I got silence, one film done, a couple short documentaries. I'm going to do a producer's cut of silence to make this better because it needs substantial improvements. It needs a Mike Sonovich touch. I got multiple books. So then people are like, why don't you let so-and-so be at your event? Well, where's his book? He wrote a book. She wrote a book. You, where, you know, trolling Twitter is fun, and I fully approve of it. But if you want to be treated like a real deal intellectual, you better figure out a way to write a book, produce a film. So we want, you know, we want real, you know, we want real Gs there. Dude. We want real, you know, people. The kind of people I want, these are the kind of people I want at my event. I don't want Bush League players. Anybody can write books, but you're blocked for, where's your book? You probably don't have one. We want real deal, the real deal. Real OGs, real people who are, have real accomplishments. So I'm not thinking, can I get this random e-celebrity at the event to talk? I'm thinking, can I create an event that can get Peter Thiel to talk? And this is, by the way, a kind of way to think out a vision for your own life if you're doing anything in life is, how do you measure success? How do you measure what you want to do, right? Well, I want to plan the kind of event I want to plan the kind of event where Peter Thiel talk. And you know what that means? It means no morons. It means no Bush League players. It means no attention whores. It means no worthless people who have nothing to offer, right? You, you, you know, he came to the deplorable, right? Peter Thiel came to the deplorable, to my event and to my co-founder co event. You know, Jeff is a great guy. We did watch the video I did with Jeff Giese on fourth generation warfare, mimetic warfare. Brilliant guy. So Peter Thiel came to the deplorable. The deplorable. That's the level we're playing at. We're not playing at the internet celebrity level. We're not playing at the, oh, some guy on Twitter with a few followers, you know, who does some snarky things, publicity stunts. We're, this is the level we're playing at, major league. Right? So I have to make an event where I can get people like that to come to my event. That is how big we're thinking. We're not thinking – Bill Mitchell, <laughs> right? Bill can come, by the way. Bill's no longer banned from my events. So Bill Mitchell is no longer banned from my events. I I'll still, you know, we're all still allowed to troll Bill. But Bill is not banned from my events. So if Bill wants to come to the big event, then he can definitely register. He won't be blacklisted or anything like that, right? <clears throat> but we're not, we're not thinking how can I make an event where Bill Mitchell is going to speak. Right? That's, I'm laughing at my own jokes, but it is true. Bill can come to the event. Bill is not banned. If Bill Mitchell buys an event registration, he's welcome to come to my event. I'll shake his hand and be happy to talk to him. But I'm not thinking, how can me and Jeff organize an event where Bill Mitchell will come speak? Woo, woo. Right? We're thinking, how can we organize an event where Peter Thiel or Paul Graham or Sam Altman, or Kellyanne Conway, or Don Jr., or General Flynn, 
or Steve Bannon, which I don't think Steve Bannon could go, you know, that's a little hot, but who knows what will happen by October. That is the level we're thinking. We're thinking how can we get people like that, people of that caliber, at the event, right? We're not, by the way, we're not thinking how can I get Bill Mitchell to speak. We're thinking I want Sam Altman to speak. I want Peter Thiel to speak. I want Paul Graham to speak. I want Kellyanne Conway. I, that is the level we're thinking. Much, much, much higher level. Much higher level. Hit the like button. If you want this event to happen, hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button. <clears throat> hit the like button if you want it to happen. Um, Alex Jones, I hope, would be there. I would love Alex Jones to be there. Roger Stone, I'd like to get Roger Stone. Get me Roger Stone. But again, that is the level we're thinking. But we want it, and this is where we're carving out our own, this is where we're carving out our own niche. I am a nationalist. I'm a populist. Those of you who insult me, you've obviously never read this book. I wrote a lot of fucking freaking, I wrote a lot of stuff in this that is going to get me in a lot of trouble when I run for Congress. That's why I really love when people are like, oh, yeah, Cernovich is soft and Cernovich is this. And like, well, you should ought to read my book, right? It, read MAGA Mindset, and then you can come talk to me about how, you know, I'm not controversial enough for you, right? Ooh, not controversial. Why? Because I don't do publicity stunts to get fake news media attention, right? Go read MAGA Mindset. <laughs> And then you can talk to me about who's the intellectual leader of the movement. I am the intellectual leader, along with Stephen Molyneux, Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, and others of the New Right. And so I'm a nationalist and I'm a populist. But our big event is not going to be just a rah, rah, rah political rally. We want to have a legitimate intellectual event where moderates, where liberals, no SJWs, no SJWs and no neo-Nazis, right? If you're not a neo-Nazi and you're not an SJW, then there's this big, huge place that you can walk right through, right? Do you believe you should hit people that you disagree with, the whole punch a Nazi meme? Well, if you believe in political violence, then you can't be there. If you want to throw up Nazi salutes because you think that's so cool and edgy and isn't that the greatest, you can't come either. So those of you that want to throw up the Nazi salutes and those of you that want to punch people that you don't agree with, you're not welcome. You can't come. You can't come to my events. You're banned. Cry about how I'm censoring you. Throw your own events. Throw your own events. Quit crying about why you can't come to mine. There's nothing that cracks me up more than when people who go, oh, yeah, Cernovich isn't relevant. Cernovich isn't a big deal. Oh, he won't let me come to this event. Oh, he won't let me come to this event. Well, wait a minute. If I'm irrelevant and I'm not the movement leader and I'm not the face of the new right and I'm not the guy who puts asses in seats, why are you crying because you can't come to my event? Go throw a bigger event. If you're such hot shit and you're so relevant and you're so big and I'm just trying to ride your coattails, go throw your own event. Oh, that's right. Nobody's going to show up. So then you're going to cry because you can't come to my event. Oh, but I'm irrelevant. But wait a minute. You want to come to my event, though? So? Logic. Basic logic fail. Basic logic. You can't call me irrelevant and then cry because you can't come to my events. So what was I saying? If you believe in political violence, like an SJW, and if you want to throw up Nazi salutes, then nobody can be there. Right? But that leaves a big room. There's a big middle. There's a lot of people who... Maybe we disagree on politics. Maybe we don't agree on everything, but we can actually talk. So my events are going to be the kind of events where if you're a liberal, like, say, Sam Altman, and you're a liberal and you're smug and you're annoying, but you actually want to sit down with people you disagree with and find out what is this movement about? What is populism about? What is nationalism about? If you want to debate and argue our ideas, then I want those people to come to my event. Right? Those people I want at my event. Right? But here's what a lot of people miss. If morons come in to dance like puppets for the fake news media to get attention because they're fame hungry, then serious people won't come to our events. That is the reality. 
The reality is if you're a clown and you're a dancing monkey who will do anything to get yourself in the Daily Mail or the Atlantic, that is how you measure success. I measure success by how many people show up. I measure success by a real simple metric, asses and seats. How many people, if I throw an event, how many people are going to show up? I don't measure it by, did the Atlantic write about me? Did the Daily Mail write about me? Did CNN write about me? And by the way, all those people have written about me. So it isn't a question that I can't get it. A lot of people used to go, Cernovich, you're just jealous you don't get more media coverage. What are you talking about? I blow off the media most of the time because it usually it doesn't do me any good. I only talk to people who are open-minded and liberal as a way to build bridges, right? So I'll talk to, you know, liberal. So Der Spiegel came out. They're doing an article on me. Der Spiegel is sending a photographer out here. <clears throat> so Der Spiegel is doing a big article on me, and they came out here, and they're going to do a photo shoot, I think Monday, because the guy's a liberal, but he wanted to talk. He wants to figure out what it's all about. So if you're a liberal who wants to figure out what it's all about, then I'll sit down and I'll talk to you, right? I will sit down and talk to anybody who wants to kind of figure things out. But I'm not going to talk to people who are going to lie to me. So if you want to throw an event like that, then you have to get the idiots out. And that means the idiots on the left and the idiots who want to throw up the salute. You can't let idiots in your room because then you can't get serious people in your room and then you're marginal. Basic. What else is going on? Oh, yeah, Vice, HBO Vice is doing a thing on me. Um, Cyber Wars came out a couple months ago, I think. So, yeah, there's been, you know, I've been doing more media. I used to say no to all media. But then my rule is if you're a liberal but not an SJW, then I'll talk to you because then that's a way to build bridges. That's the way I look at it is I don't, the media attention doesn't do anything for me, guys. That's what I keep trying to tell people. I've done it all, right? I have been on 60 Minutes. I have been on Fox News. I've been on Al Jazeera and the BBC and Russia Today or RT. So I've been literally all over the world on the media. You know what's going to get you the most Twitter followers, the most YouTube subscribers? I'll give you a guess. I've had it all. I've been written about on CNN. They've talked about me on CNN. They've done features on me on SNBC. Do you know what is going to get you the most actual people who are going to follow you on Twitter, buy your books, read your books, subscribe to your YouTube? Numero uno. Well, numero <sighs> Stephen Molyneux and Alex Jones. Stephen Molyneux and Alex Jones. Stephen Molyneux, Alex Jones. Paul Joseph Watson. I would rather be on PewDiePie than 60 Minutes. If somebody goes, hey, Cernovich, you can either be on 60 Minutes or you can do a, a video with PewDiePie. I would say not only would I rather do the video with PewDiePie, but I'll pay PewDiePie to do a video interview. Right? That's what people don't understand. New media is so much more powerful than old media that I would rather do an interview, I'd rather have PewDiePie interview me than be on any show in the world because that is the real influence. New media, new media is the real influence. Old media does fudge all, fudge all for me. I got a quick cuss and I only cuss one time. Yeah, new media, new media is what brings voice to the yard. And the girls to the yard. New media. So I'd rather do me new media than conventional media. I mean, think about think about um go to Social Blade. You can watch when I'm on Alex Jones. I mean, here I'll show you right now in real time. You can go on socialblade.com. Let me find it. Yeah, you can go to socialblade.com and I'll just show you right now in real time. That ordinarily I get about three or four hundred Twitter followers. Ordinarily, right? I'll do three or four hundred Twitter followers. Wednesday, I got 790. Thursday, I got 951. Friday, I got 749. Why? Alex Jones. Going on Alex Jones and guest hosting, I'm now doing one hour a week with Alex at the very least. So um, instead of doing Alex Jones this Friday, I did it on Wednesday. I traded with Roger Stone. And guest hosting on Alex Jones for an hour is way, way, way more valuable, 
way more valuable than total media coverage. I would way rather guest host for that. People go, are you getting paid for the one hour a week gig? No, I'm not. Because my currency is social media. My currency is YouTube subscribers. My currency is book sales. My currency is impact to the people, people watching me. Somebody gave me that, you know, for free. Amazing, right? Hopefully he sold a bunch. Hopefully I promoted it heavily. I sent the link out so I hope people bought it so the guy, you know, is making some money. That is my currency, not fame. I've only meant to become famous to, to have a message. So for the one hour a week thing, I'm not asking for money. Absolutely not. Now for a five day a week thing, well that's a different thing. So the economics of it, for an hour a week to be on Alex Jones, definitely I haven't asked for any money. Don't care. The five day a week show, because I can still build up my platforms. So, so I'll teach you a little bit of economics and how I think about the world. If I do Alex's Jones show for an hour a week on Friday, then preparing for that takes me out of the game for my own platforms. So even a few of you like Kevin and others have been like, why haven't you been to as many Periscopes? Well, because if I'm doing stuff with Alex, it's hard to do my own you know, stuff too. So one day, you know, one day a week for Alex Jones is great for me. But if I went on Alex Jones for five days a week, my own platforms are going to suffer big time. And the growth, we're having a lot of big growth. So the growth of that, because all my energy would be with Alex Jones's thing, so that would be a different thing. That would be a different thing. That would be a different thing. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. And if you're on Periscope, I've noticed a lot of you, like Laura and others, have migrated from Periscope to YouTube. So thank you for that. You know, we're, you know, I like, don't get me wrong. If you prefer Periscope, watch me on Periscope. You know, God, I'm never going to say you have to watch me here. I'm just glad to watch it. So if you want to watch me on Periscope, great. But I would like you to click over the link via Twitter and subscribe on YouTube and hit the like button and hit the, and hit the, um, the notification button and everything. Oh, I'm having a Patreon call tomorrow. So if you're a Patreon, check your messages. I'm sending out a message with the call in time tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to have a Patreon call. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Mike Cernovich. And for that, the, you can, um, yeah, so we're doing, a, we're doing a Patreon call tomorrow. I'm going to catch you all up on what we've been doing, the journalism and everything. So you'll get a full update. I haven't been, I, we were doing calls once a week and then I ended up traveling so much. I was in DC, press briefing and everything. So we fell behind on that. But, so tomorrow, check your messages and I'll give you the call and information. It'll be a Patreon call, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Mike Sundridge. That'll be tomorrow. What else will be going on? I guess we'll take a little QA. I don't have my phone set up, so we can't take your, we can't take your calls right now. Yeah, YouTube is way better quality than Periscope. That's the issue. <clears throat> um, Zayla says, how can we stop equating? Well, I mean, I don't equate all Jews as the same, so that isn't really a question for me. There is a lot more intellectual diversity among Jews than people want to say. People make it seem like, I know Jews who don't believe in Israel. I know a lot of Jews who don't believe in Israel. So then people say, well, why can Jews be pro-Israel and ethno-nationalist, I'm like, okay, the Jews are not a monolith, <laughs> right? It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. So my answer to that, if you, you can also super chat me on YouTube. So I forgot to tell you. See, I forget. I keep forgetting, you know. That's how I'm so focused on work and everything is that if you are on YouTube, there's a little dollar sign in the chat thing, and that's called super chat, and then you can – Make a contribution to funner journalism, and then your question also gets featured featured at the top. Oh, talk about Roger Stone's documentary. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Give me Roger Stone. You got to watch it. I know. Netflix is SJW. Thank you, Matt C. Netflix is SJW. I know. I'm a subscriber. I'm a hypocrite. Oh, my God. I'm, just not, I'm not perfect. So... Netflix is definitely an SJW outfit. I hate to give money to the enemy. Man. Man. But give me Roger Stone. Primo. 
primo work. When I watched Get Me Roger Stone, that was so – thank you, DePaul84, for the super chat. When I watched Get Me Roger Stone, I thought, that is incredible. I need my documentaries to look like that. That is the new standard. That is one of the top five documentaries of all time. What is the number one documentary of all time? I'll give you one guess. If you know the answer, you can't. This is a guess. <clears throat> so if you're a longtime reader, you already know the answer, so you can't. Don't cheat. Don't forget to type the messages, guys. Exactly. Zale777. So if you're on Super Chat on YouTube, you can also ask a question, and your question shows up much bigger. But if you don't want to Super Chat me, I'll be good, man. I'll be all good. But hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. The best documentary of all time. Take your guess. What documentary do you think I consider the best documentary of all time and why? Because there's a reason. Because when I tell you what the best documentary of all time was, you are not going to believe me at first. Mike, will you please view my submission for silence? Copy a link to your Twitter thing, and I will. Because I've been monitoring it. So I will tell you the best documentary of all time and why but you have to guess somebody said fat sick and nearly dead that is a good guess it is not the best documentary of all time but i like what you think so whoever said fat sick and nearly dead is the best documentary of all time explain yourself why you believe that is because that is definitely a very 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 important documentary other good documentaries are Bigger, faster, stronger, which tells the truth. Thank you, Kevin J. Which tells the truth about anabolic steroids, but it isn't the best. The best document. Hit the like button if you're on YouTube. Hit the like button if you want me to tell you what the best documentary of all time is and why. If you're on Periscope, tap the screen. I think we're gonna hit. I think we're gonna hit twenty. Have we hit twenty million likes yet on Periscope? So if you're on Periscope, hit the like button. Let's get to 20 million likes. I think we're close. I'm going to see if we are. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button. Hit the like button if you want me to tell you what the best documentary of all time is. Hold on. I'm going to see how many likes I have on Periscope. I haven't been keeping track. 19,247,000. All right, so we're not going to hit 20 million likes today, but we will soon. All right, the best documentary of all time is Pumping Iron by George Butler and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now you're going to say, Mike, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard today. Right now you are saying, wait a minute, Pumping Iron is the best documentary of all time? Right now you're all saying, that is, Mike, I thought you were a smart guy. That is really dumb. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard you say. Oh, really? Oh, really? Is it? Is that really the wrong answer? How many of you go to the gym and lift weights? How many of you go to the gym and lift weights? How many of you drink protein powder? How many of you take creatine? How many of you take vitamin supplements? How many of you go to spin class? How many of you go to Pilates? How many of you do yoga? Before pumping iron, the only exercise anybody did was jogging. Before pumping iron, the only exercise people really did was jog. And weightlifting was a very marginal thing. Gym culture, as you know it, is because of pumping iron. The only reason any of us go to the gym is because of pumping iron. Gym culture was created by pumping iron. Pumping iron is the most culturally significant documentary in American history. Think about it, right? Think about it. That is what created gym culture. Even if you're a woman and you do Pilates, the only reason Pilates studios exist is because gym culture existed, right? That's the only reason that is all because of pumping iron. That's the only reason that exists. So it is the most culturally relevant documentary in American history. Smash the like button. See, but I surprised you. You thought that I was going to come up with some Jim Bro explanation. You didn't really know where I was going to go. See, I take you, I take you different places where you think I'm going to go. Right? This game. Game is always, you think I'm going to take you here, but I take you there. 
I ran game on you. And I ran game on you. You thought, oh, yeah, Cernovich is going to do a Jim Bro thing. No, no, no. Jim Culture, cultural impact. So this fake news documentary hoaxed. People will not trust the fake news media ever again after watching hoax. This goes back to mindset and defining, defining success. After people watch hoax, and it's going to be so big that it's going to take the world by storm, and it's going to be in the movie theaters, and everybody's going to watch it. Millions of people are going to watch it. Nobody will ever trust CNN after watching hoax. Nobody will ever trust the New York Times. Nobody will ever trust the fake news media after watching hoax. Hoax will be the most culturally relevant documentary since Pumping Iron because people are going to watch it and say, wow, I can't trust the fake news. That is what I want to do. That is what I want to do. That is going to be cultural relevance where nobody is going to trust the news. And you know how we're going to do hoax? Hit the like button if you're on YouTube. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, and tap the screen. <coughs> hoax is going to be, and then I got to go. We're doing Mother's Day dinner. So I'm going to have a Mother's Day dinner, but before I'm going to go, hoax is going to have an A side and a B side. A side is going to be a polemic on the fake news media. So the first half of the media is going to say, or the first half of hoax is going to say, look at the fake news media. They're terrible. But I don't want people to leave pessimistic. I want people to leave with hope. So what will the B side be? The B side is going to be who can you trust? So part one is going to thrash the fake news media and leave people thinking, oh, man, this is terrible. I'm outraged. I can't trust anybody. Then the B side, we're going to bring in Stefan Molyneux, Paul Joseph Watson, Mike Cernovich, real news people, Real commentators, real thinkers, real new media personality, right? So first we're going to crush the fake news media, and then we're going to leave on a high note. Mike, we love you when you talk about this. So thank you, Kevin. Then we're going to leave on a high note. Who can you trust? Who can you trust us? I am the media now. When is host coming out? I don't know. All right, if you're on Periscope, I'm going to end the Periscope, and I'm going to talk to YouTube for five more minutes. So if you're on Periscope, I'm going to go ahead and end the transmission, and then I'm going to finish up talking to YouTube. So if you want to watch the last couple minutes, then head on over to YouTube, youtube.com forward slash danger of play. It's a dumb URL. I don't like the URL either. I can't change it. They won't let me change it. So we're stuck with it. You go open mind isn't mine, but all my videos do get end up. All my periscopes go on open mind. And a lot of times they get more views than my own videos. And people go, why do you allow that, Cernovich? And I said, dude. I love it. Monetize my videos. Upload them. Upload my videos with credit to me. It's a Creative Commons license. All my videos are Creative Commons. You can upload my unedited videos if you link to my books or my Patreon. Right? And then monetize the videos. So you can upload my videos to your channel, monetize them, make money off of them, and I'm great. But you just have to give me a link attribution either to Gorilla Mindset, my book, or to my Patreon or something like that. So if you're on Periscope, head on over to YouTube. And we're back. Loose Change. Um, there's been a lot of documentaries out there. There's been a lot of documentaries, that is for sure. But I want to set the standard for what a good documentary is. And I really liked, I really liked Give Me Roger Stone. Give Me Roger Stone was a great, great, great. Alexa's got a Mother's Day thing. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to you and all the mothers. Yeah, so I did. I did Winsprints. I did Winsprints with the dog. See? You hear that? That is all rock right there. So you can. Right? So I did been getting back in shape all year. It takes a while, man. Once you get out of shape and I'm not on any of the good stuff. When you're on the good stuff, you can get back in shape in 12 weeks. When you're on the sauce, the hot sauce. Mike, I sent you a DM. Okay, Matt. Oh, thanks. If you're on the hot sauce, you can get back in shape in 12 weeks because you can just lose fat. You don't lose any strength or muscle, you know. But I'm not on the good stuff. I haven't been on the good stuff for two years. Ugh. You can find pictures of me when I was on the good stuff. Shauna didn't like that look at all, though. Shauna likes my look right now where I look kind of 
I think it's a softer look. I, I don't really like this look. I like the looks where I look just mean. You can find those pictures on the internet, though, where I look like a very, very scary guy. But, you know, whatever, whatever. So, yeah, so getting back in shape when you're not on the good stuff, it takes a while. <laughs> it takes, like, two or three, you know, takes two or three more times than it does. Do I miss the good stuff? Oh, you better believe it. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Of course I miss the good stuff. There, You know, there's nothing like going to the gym every day and you're stronger, you know, every time when you go to the gym. I mean, there's, it's amazing, right? I definitely miss it. Definitely miss the good stuff. You want to get back to the gym, how do you start? Go to the gym and don't do anything. I'm, kidding. I'm not kidding. People go... How do I get back into shape? Go to the gym and do nothing. And people go, Mike, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Here's what a lot of people tell me. This is like the story of my life. They go, Mike, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard until I give them the reason. Nature abhors a vacuum. So if you want to get in shape and you go to the gym for half an hour, you're going to walk around and be like, oh, what is that? What is that? You're going to actually start doing things. You're not just going to stand there and do nothing. You're going to like, oh, let me figure this machine out. What is that? And it's not going to be like a big hardcore workout. See, John Connor, are you effing kidding me? You're blocked because you're stupid. You can't be here. So just go to the gym, and then you're going to figure it out. And then you're going to go to the gym a little bit more, and then you're going to figure it out. And then you're going to get better. Then you're going to figure out intensity. Then you're going to figure out how the machines work. The whole point is just go there. How much monthly support for Patreon calls? 15 monthly. Yeah, $15 a month on Patreon. Here, I'll link to it one more time. 15 bucks a month on Patreon gets you, uh, gets you into the conference calls. I also am going to send out swag. I owe you guys a lot of swag. If you guys are mad, if you guys are mad at me, I understand. I, I owe you guys coffee cups, T-shirts, the whole thing. I have T-shirts now, so I'm going to get everybody T-shirts. I owe you guys a lot of swag. Yeah, I'm going to get you guys T-shirts and other stuff, too. Just, um, but yeah, 15 bucks a month gets you into the Patreon calls. The point is, just go to the gym. It doesn't really matter what you do because you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out when you're there. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out when you're there. So right now there's, here, I'll show you guys. There's a couple t-shirts too. So there is a, let me see if I can find it. We do have Cernovich Apparel now. Have a certain, this isn't my company, by the way. This is just a, um, a friend of mine has a clothing company, and he goes, hey, can we put your face on a shirt and sell it and, you know, give me five bucks a shirt? So sure. But yeah, there, you can click on that, and you can get a Cernovich face T-shirt or a Mindset is Life Gorilla Mindset T-shirt. And I just, yeah, I just typed the links right there. And... Yeah, so you can go ahead and click on those links. And, you know, like I said, there, there's not a lot of money in apparel. It's just it's five bucks a shirt I get. So that is more that people – it's more that people wanted those than anything else. A lot of people ask me for a long time, you know, I want apparel and I want this. And I'm like, oh, you know, great. That's a great, that's a great thing, dude. <laughs> right? So it's a, great, it's a great thing that people want that kind of stuff. So I'm – you know, I definitely um, created – but yeah, they want to do it, and I do it. You know, it's just the way I look at it. All right, hold on. Here we are. Live control room. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get back over here. I clicked the wrong button. Stream status. Okay, so my stream is okay. Good. Be right back. Hold on. I can't see your comments. I want to take a few more comments before I leave. So if you're still here, don't go. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I am about to come back the stream and then I'll see your comments and then I'm gonna go that button here we go all right here we go out to all right hit the like button hit the subscribe button I'll take your questions we got a few more Mike who is Scott Bisnick I don't know remember when Hillary called Pepe a hate signal symbol I yeah that was funny Spinderella 20 bucks thank you that's a nice super shot what about North Korea um, Trump is trying to get Putin involved in there which is good Trump more or less set Putin now are you gonna let them Get you like that, bro. Are you going to let them do you dirty? So we'll get Putin in there. Spaghetti or lasagna? Um, spaghetti because lasagna is really easy to overeat. 
I mean, a lasagna, one little piece of, like that, a lasagna is 500 calories. And three pieces of what I eat, 1,500, 1,700 calories. So with lasagna, you're just going to eat the cows too much. Spaghetti, 1,500 calories of spaghetti you would throw up. But lasagna, I could eat a whole pan of lasagna. What else we got? Scott is from MFA. He said you don't like him and speak against him. I don't. What is MFA? Guys, you got to realize a lot of people make up drama with me that people I've never heard of. And the reason is because they don't have anything else going on with them. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know who, who that guy is, guys. There's a lot of people who – because to have me create drama is a brand builder for them. So they're, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, this and that. But I don't know who these people are, dude. Yeah, so a lot of people just make up stuff that, that I don't um, – that I've never even heard of. Definitely never even heard of. Trey Goddard for FBI directly weigh 116 pounds and I've eaten an entire pan of lasagna. LOL. Exactly. Lasagna, you can just eat a pan. A pan of it. That's like 4,000 calories. And it's so good. And a little a little piece of lasagna is not gonna, you know, satiate you. You you know, if you eat a little piece of lasagna this long, you know, and that thick or whatever, this is a, a 700 calorie thing and that is not going to fulfill you obviously to be thicker but 700 calories of lasagna is not going to satiate you you're going to want to eat you know a whole pan of it and the next thing you know you hate yourself <laughs> mike how can i get a t-shirt i posted links earlier i definitely um i definitely i posted links posted links earlier crypto fashion i think is the site um, thoughts on starting strength and Mark Ripito? Good guys. I don't agree with the people who say drink a gallon of milk a day. The food pyramid is a hoax. Agree. Definitely agree. Do yourself a favor and kill yourself. Wow, there's a lot of hatred. A lot of hatred in your heart. I've never told anybody to kill themselves. What else? Okay, we're going to take five more questions. Mike, thoughts on World War III? Less likely with Trump than it would be under Hillary. That's one. Four more. How when will the MSM and their platforms be made irrelevant? Hoaxed. My, my thing will do it. Mike, thanks for answering Super Chats. That wasn't a question, so it doesn't count. Mike, will you make a workout vid? I have a bunch of them on my YouTube page. My older YouTube videos were all Jim Bro stuff. Three. So we have two more. Two more. Keep it up. We love you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. It's very nice of you. Appreciate it. Love you, too. What do I think about the ketogenic diet? The ketogenic diet is great. All right. One more question. One more question. Thoughts on Sean Spicer versus um, Sarah Sanders? Neither. I like Sarah Sanders, but we need somebody more aggressive. Um, we need somebody up there who actually hates the media. God, I got to get the shirt altered. I'm swimming in the shirt. Fashion, no, no. Here's a fashion tip before you go. If your clothes are too baggy, right, like this, they're going to make you look, get clothes that fit right. Gah. I had to buy this shirt last minute because my other shirt was all stinky from the cigar lounge, so I had to buy a new shirt. But get clothes that fit. Trust me. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Got to go. Happy Mother's Day to the moms. If you're a, a child and your mom is still alive, call her. She won't, they won't be around forever. They did the best they could. How do we help journals like Tim Pool? Same thing, Super Chat. Super Chat, Patreon, cut your cable. Cut your cable, save $200. Frank Kickass, thank you, Frank. Cut your cable, save $200. Give Tim Pool 10 bucks. Give everybody, you know, spread it around. Give a bunch of people, you know, 10 bucks, $15 here. You know, it all adds up. It all adds up. Thanks for watching. I got to go hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for the Patreons. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Hey, nobody has to ever give me anything. Your viewership and subscribership and linkership is enough. Talk to you all soon. Happy Mother's Day. Call your mom.